forever chemicals in our drinking water and the damage they may be doing to our bodies have been a concern for quite a while. Now, the Environmental Protection Agency has just put forth strict national limits for six of these forever chemicals, and they say that this is just the beginning. So let's talk about it. Hey, everybody, it's Dr. David. Hope you're having a good day. As many of you know, I'm a pediatrician in Tampa, Florida. I've been focusing for many years about the health of our bodies, what goes into them, how we detoxify. I've all been talking about, as you've probably seen of recent, about clean water, clean air, clean flu, um, food, clean supplements, and our body's ability to remove toxins as much as possible and to stay healthy. Now, a couple of months ago, I did a video about... Um, forever chemicals and uh i put the link in the show notes below um today i'm going to be focusing on mostly but these new epa standards these these limitations have been put forth and also some of the things that we um can do in order to protect ourselves decrease the exposure as much as possible so we're going to talk about these forever chemicals what they're about why they're a problem we'll talk about what these new epa standards are and as i said what can we do to help out now, first of all, let's talk about forever chemicals as a whole. So these are a group of chemicals. They're called forever chemicals because they take forever to degrade, take forever to rid the body. So certain things that are toxic, they do degrade over time, but these aren't. They're sticking around for a long time. Um, and this particular group, which are called PFAS, which stands for per and polyfluorochemical substances, okay? And they're a group of chemicals that um, are that have these like fluoro polymer coatings and they protect products they uh, against things like heat water oil stains grease etc okay so that's why they're applied to a lot of different um technologies uh, and um, and uh, stuff that we have household goods etc that are part of our uh, everyday life now um as far as some of these backgrounds, so among these PFAS, and I'm not going to get into the specific chemicals. I'm just going to use the uh, abbreviations of them. So the, the two that were kind of the most widely used, PFOA and PFOS, um, they have been the most widely used but also the most studied types of PFAS according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Now, companies started making these and, and using them back in the 1940s. Um, but the substances themselves, a lot of them were largely phased out in America by the mid-2000s. But the problem is that they persist in our environment. Why? Because they're forever chemicals. They're not degrading from our environment, so we're getting exposed. It's getting into our water supplies, food supplies, etc. Now, they have been mostly replaced by newer types of chemicals that are still in the PFAS category. And there is no data at all that tells us that these are any safer than the old ones. So they may, you know, so they replaced it, but we really have no evidence. And there's concerns out there that this may not be any better. It's just a different one. Okay. Now, what is the problem with these forever chemicals? Well, they've been associated with a higher risk of many different health um, conditions. Okay. Cancer probably will be the number one. One of the biggest health concerns associated with the one called PFOA is an increased risk of kidney cancer. And then another one called PFOS has also been associated with liver cancer. But it's beyond the cancers. It's heart disease. They've shown their association with higher cholesterol levels, thyroid disease, having um, low birth weight, um, reproductive issues, decreased fertility. Um, the 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 Health and Human Services um, Department for the um, for the U.S. said almost all of us have these in our bodies. So we're constantly being exposed. We're not getting rid of them. Now, this most recent um, ruling by the Envir Environmental Protection Agency, very powerful. I have to say it's one of the, the best restrictions, protections for us, for our environment that I've seen in quite some time. So the EPA um, established national limits for six different types of these perfluoralkyl and these polyfluoralkyl substances in drinking water in particular, because that's the way that we are the most exposed. Now, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, water systems should eliminate these chemicals because there is no safe um, level. So let me say that again. The EPA says that there is no safe level of exposure. Okay, hats off for them for saying that. Sad for us that this is true. Now, um, in terms of these recently announced standards, the so the PFOA, 
and the PFOS can no long cannot exceed now four parts per trillion um, in public drinking water. And these are the two types, as I said, that are most commonly um, been um, been used over time in the in the um, stain resistant products, in the um, stick resistant products, etc. Um, also, they're very commonly found in food packaging, also in firefighting foam. That's um, so any other time there's discharge, that's been a problem. Now there are three. There are additional um, PFAS chemicals, um, and then and those will be restricted to ten parts per trillion. So the others are four parts per trillion, and we're talking about mi micro, micro, micro amounts at this point, which is great. One is called PFNA. The other is called PFX, PFHXS. I'm going to say that one more time correctly. PFHXS. Um, and uh, and are, these are actually older versions of the PFOSs as well. Um, but in addition to that, there are, they've come up with these new versions. They're called Gen X chemicals, right? Because I don't know if they're going to try and attract Gen X customers from this. But these are this new generation of chemicals that they've been created for replacement of the PFOA. But again, do we know that they're any safer? We don't know yet. All right. So now in terms of these new limits, these reflect the lowest amounts of these forever chemicals then any laboratory can reasonably detect and potter and also that public water systems can properly and effectively treat so there this is not a doomsday scenario there are things that can be done that are being done that will be done in order to protect us now the epa actually says that local public water systems um that don't monitor for the pfas have three years to start doing so so there are Companies, I mean, states that are doing this, there are companies, um, utilities that are doing this, but they're going to say that they have three years just to start. To me, they should have started three years ago and three minutes from now. So that is sad that they're giving them three years to do this for such a public emergency as we're dealing with. Um, but they said that if they do detect any of these PFAS um, at the levels that exceed the, F the EPA um, criteria, that they will then have two more years to purchase equipment and install the new technologies to reduce the PFAS in the drinking water to the acceptable standards. So again, in, company in communities that have it, they still may not be clean for another five years still. And that's, again, pretty sad. Now, the EPA says that a billion dollars in funding is now newly available. There's been $6 billion um, dollars overall with this. And this is to hate, help the states and the territories implement the testing and the treatment at the public systems, but also, thankfully, to help owners of private wells to also test and clean. So that's really good because I know there are people who are on well water, for instance. Now, the administrator of the EPA, his name is Michael Regan, and he says that 100 million Americans will be healthier and safer because of this action, which, of course, that's tremendous. That's huge. Yay, EPA. But the EPA estimates that 6 to 10 percent of the country's public water systems between 40,000 and I mean, sorry, 4,000 and 6,700 total will need to make absolute changes to in order to meet this. So think there are saying that a lot of places are are meeting the standards, but the, you know, 10% of all Americans, for sure not. Now, there are 11 states that have standards such as the maximum containment levels for certain PFAS in drinking waters, and there are also 12 states that have adopted guidance, health advisories, notification when the levels are too high, but haven't really put a full plan into place. Now, I don't want to read these 23 states on uh, to take up your time, but if you look in the show notes in the description down below, you'll see what the what the two what the, those states are and which categories that they're in. Now, in, t in terms of the environmental work group, um, which I've talked about before, they're the ones who do the clean 15 dirty dozen. They're the ones who are doing the skin deep for the um, things that we're putting on our skin, hair and nails. And um, they um, are just they're nonpartisan, non-governmental group. They're the, like, the great watchdog for all of us. And uh, thank goodness that they've all, I've gotten a lot of information from them. I know I've shared a lot of information on them as well. They say um, this is a, and, and I'm glad to hear that this one, because it's obviously one thing if the government is commenting on the government's own um, policies, but this is the EWG, the one that has been our champion making these next comments. Number one, they say, this is a huge historic public health win. The most important step we've taken to improve the safety of our tap water in an entire generation. The single most important step we've ever taken to address PFAS, ever. Again, powerful words, powerful assessments. And so, you know, it seems as if this is real stuff that we're talking about. So, yay. Now, in terms of my take on all of this, you know, thank goodness. And it's about time that the government is taking um, these toxic exposures seriously and taking action.
But again, you know, these are, I mentioned that they're just checking for six. There are over 12,000 known PFAS out there. So we're really just scraping, getting straight here. So, you know, my feeling is, again, if you're in a community with it, you know, don't wait the five years for them to tell you whether the problem's there. Don't wait eight years for them to do it. There are things that we can be doing to protect ourselves at home. Um, in particular with our water, the most common way that we can remove PFAS from our water supply is through an activated carbon um, filter. This traps the chemicals as water passes through them. Okay. Now there's also reverse osmosis and iron exchange um, resins, which act like tiny magnets and they attract the um, PFAS chemicals as well. And of course, these need to be tended to over time with these filtration systems in order to make sure that they're not working, but also that they're not used up. Now, I've gone ahead, and so I, I've mentioned before that we do have a Patreon for our members. Um, I've gone there, and I've put the... Um I've put all of the uh, things that we do in our household in order to minimize our exposures, um, et cetera. So if you can become a, a Patreon member, you will be able to uh, see those specific things that we privately do in our own house. Um, and of course, also, if you do like this um, article, um, this story here, please share it with other people. Please subscribe. Please like. We are making our ways up the algorithms, but obviously, um, and hopefully you feel that this is information that every human being should be seeing. And the only way that we can do that is get our numbers up in, the, in these algorithms. So so please uh, do join us so we can really pass this information along. All right. Hope you have a great day.